Welcome back IT Pros to video number two. Well, in this video, we're going to work on the Cisco SG500 and I added one more, another Cisco 2960 that we are going to upgrade using a USB flash drive. So for the first one, we are going to do, we have a, we're going to do it through a, a web interface. As you can see here, we, we're going to continue with the video the, where, where we left the, uh, the last video. So I'm going to bring the switch, the 10.1.10.222. I put already the username and password. I'm going to go to administration for this switch. And uh, from there, we're going to start working. So we go to file management and download backup configuration. So you can do it. We're going to do the same way the, using a TFTP. As you can see here, you can do it using HTTP. We're going to back it up. That's what, what we need to do. And the address of the TFTP server, which is this machine, 10.1.11.100. We're going to back up the startup configuration, which is the one saved in the environment. Uh, and we are going to give it a name, sg500.txt. Now we click apply. As you can see here, the numbers are going up. That means the transfer is being made. Uh, since it's a very short file, it finished in a, in a few seconds. As you can see here, we have the SG500, so we have this backed up. So no problems if something goes wrong, we can recover the configuration. So now what I'm going to do is uh, I, have, I already downloaded the Cisco IOS for this SG500. As you can see, uh, the extension is ROS, it's not BIM like in the 2960. So in order to download this, uh, this firmware, you don't need a, a, a Cisco account. You just, you just type SG500 firmware in, in Google or any web browser or any um, search engine, and you will have it. You don't need an account. I'm going to put the, the firmware in the TFTP files folder because that's what we are going to use. That's what's configuring the TFTP server that we have installed in the last video. So for now, uh, we're going to go to upgrade backup firmware well, or language, in this case, only firmware. We're going to, to do it using TFTP, but notice that we, ha we can do it using HTTP as well. By the way, it's faster with HTTP, <laughs> okay? But for this video, we're going to do it using TFTP server. So we pass the name, it has to be exactly the name. So you kind of copy paste the name from the file that you know we are going to upload. Now this is going to take a few minutes, so I'm going to pause the video and continue when it's done, like right now. Well, that was fast. It took like around five minutes to upload this. Um, now we have everything. I see the active image now. As you can see, this is the, the new iOS that we have up, uploaded to the switch. Downloaded, uploaded. I'm not really sure of the term, but it's inside the switch right now. So what we're going to do is uh, we're going to make it the next restart. This image is going to be the default. It's going to be booted by this image, by this version. So um, now what we have to do is just reboot the switch. And, and well, that's what we need to do. Um, like, like I mentioned before, guys, um, where you you can you can up, in the case of this switch you can upgrade it you can upload the image using a, a web browser as well so here we are <coughs> excuse me before we continue i'm going to ping the switch constantly because we're going to lose communication with it so 10.1.10.222 i'm going to reboot uh, okay and let's go back to the command prompt so we're going to lose communication. This is going to be a little longer. So I'm going to pause the video and I'm going to come back again, but I'm going to click reboot one more time. And I'm going to receive an, an error because the switch is already in the process, all right? So let's wait till it comes back online. There you go. The, it's timing out. Um, so we lost communication with the switch and we're going to come back when this is done. Here we go. Uh, well, we still don't have communication, but let's wait a few seconds. There we go. The switch is back on. So this one took around five minutes, six minutes. 
and let's refresh the web browser. Let's connect to the switch using the username and password. In this, uh, we're checking that again, that we have communication. Yes, we, we do, man, we do, we do have communication. So I'm going to type the username and password. This is the Cisco username, which is not advisable. I'm going to change it after we after I finish this video. So I have the pop-ups from LastPass and Google to save my password. Now I'm going to go to, uh, again, administration, uh, file management, and active image. As you can see, the active image is the, the, the one that we have uploaded a few time ago, some time ago. So we are going to save it. The upgrade has been successful. And that's technically all for the switch, guys. Uh, as you can see, it was a little, it was easier. You, you don't have to put commands or anything. So what we're going to do now is upgrade iOS from a USB flash drive. So in other words, uh, like I mentioned, I have a 2960. The IP is 10.1.10.223. And it has two USB, uh, USB ports on the switch. So I'm going to use one of those um, and we are going to see what happened. I'm going to connect to the switch using um, uh, SSH and this software, which is called Paddy, that we have downloaded uh, in the last video. So IT support, um, I type the password. Now I enable to access the global configuration, the password, and that's pretty much it. Now, what I have the USB flash in my computer and one is eight, eight, eight gigabytes. I'm going to copy the bin file, the firmware upgrade from the last video, which is the same. We have the 2960X switch, Cisco switch. Now I'm going to take out the, the switch. I'm going to connect it uh, from my computer. I'm going to take out the USB from my computer and connect it to the switch, but it's not going to work. And we are going to see why it's not going to work. I didn't take that into consideration. I'm going to type a few commands like so show USB. I, ha I have a few options. Now I, I have more information about the, the USB, like the version, which is 2.0, well, kind of good speed, but still it's going to take a, lo a long time. I thought it was going to be faster, but, but anyway. Uh, we have more information about the interface. Um, well, that's what we have with that command. So here I'm trying to get access to the USB itself, but uh, I was not able to, uh, I made mistakes typing the, the commands. Then I remember that the correct command is dear USB, but I continue to mess up a few times here. So let's hang out. As you can see, dear USB flash zero, because we have two, like I mentioned, we have two physical ports and zero and one. So in flash zero, it says invalid the DOS media and in flash one doesn't give me anything. So that means the file system is not correct, which like I mentioned before, was my mistake. I, this USB uh, drive, I have it configured with NTFS. If you don't remember, remember what, what NTFS is, is proprietary from Windows. So I have disconnected this, uh, the, 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 um, the USB from the switch, I connected back to the computer and I have a formatted using FAT32, which is by default what uh, Cisco is using, the Cisco operating, small operating system. All right, so uh, I copied the, uh, the firmware again, I disconnected, I connected back to the switch. And now, as you can see, dear USB flash zero, now I can see the content, which is the the firmware that we need. So take take that in mind. If it's if it is not working the first time, make sure that it's uh, the USB is formatted using FAT32 or perhaps even FAT16. But in this case, FAT32 works just fine. Okay, so we're going to check the version of the switch. Uh, you can see here there it is, and the version is 15.2 RE1, like we have right here. And we also have the name of the file in the flash inside the switch. Um, there you go. So we have one MC that MZ that 150. We have 152. That's the upgrade we're going to make in a few seconds. Um, now we're going to do what we did in the last video with the first two 2960 copy from 
uh, USB and the name of the file that I have it in the desktop. But I made a mistake. I need the entire name with the extension as well. So we are going to copy from the USB flash zero the name of the, of the file and where we are going to copy it to the flash in the, in the switch. So it's, it's telling me, do you want to copy it? Yes, I click OK, well, I, I click Enter, and this is going to take, like I mentioned, I thought it was, was going to be faster, but it took like five, six minutes, even though it's physically connected to it. OK, we're going to configure it. I go to config T, and like we did in the last video, I'm going to boot system and with the new image, the, which is all that name. The only thing not so is MZ.152. So I'm going to go, I exit, I save it just in case. And now I'm going to show the flash. Um, so we, we can see, uh, well, we can appreciate here that we have the new firmware and three lines down, we have the older. So this is the one that's going to be booted the next time we restart the switch. Now, the problem is uh, I'm working hours. I cannot restart the switch right now. So I'm going to do it after hours, okay? So we're going to continue in a few hours after we press reload. I'm not going to do it right now, by the way, as I mentioned before. So uh, remember, um, you have to um, save your configuration using the TFTP server, like that we did in the first video. Never, never forget to do that, guys. So uh, a few hours pass by, and here, here we are back. So I'm going to connect to the switch using SSH or PADI 10.1.10.223. I'm going to make sure I back it up. I didn't show this in the video, but you know how to do it from the last uh, and the commands as well. So I have the configuration for JJ04. So I'm good there. I'm going to do the same as always. I'm going to continue pinging the switch to 33, but that's not correct. It's to 23. Now, that's a constant ping. I'm going to save it again, even though I save it. I'm going to reload it. I lost communication. So let's ping it. And I don't have communication with the switch. Now, this freaked me out. And the reason is because it took a, a long amount of time. It took like nine minutes to upgrade. So I was really, really worried about this. But in the end, it worked. All right. Uh, so I'm going to do the same. I'm going to stop the video. and. Um, well, there we go. I didn't need. I really didn't need have to to stop it. So I'm going to connect to the switch again, and IT support. Um, I'm going to type the password, enable password, show version. And I didn't need to do to go this way, but because I have it in the desktop. But as you can see, it's the same name as the firmware in the in the folder, which is the one we uploaded, downloaded from the USB flash drive. So I'm going to check the configuration. And one more thing, since we are not using the last version, um, I mean, the file, it's taking space in our switch flash memory. So we don't need, we really don't need that one. So we are going to delete it. That's something we should do in the other switches as well. So as you can see here, we have the same file and we have the old file. This old file, we don't need it anymore. It's taking space, so I'm going to issue the commands to delete it. So delete, recursive, force, and the name, well, flash, and the name of the file. I click enter, and that's pretty much it. Uh, we have um, delete the uh, this file from from the memory of the of the switch. So that way we we have more space if, when we upgrade it again. So as you can see it here in the last command we had it in this command we don't have it anymore. So that would be for the video, guys. We have done a lot in these two videos. We have upgraded um, three Cisco switches. The first one, the 224, well, we set up the TFTP server, we connected to it, we, we issued the commands to back up the, the configuration. Uh, for the 222, we, we did the same using a web browser. And for the last one, we upgrade the firmware using a USB flash drive. Well, um, always using the TFTP server, which is this machine, 100. Well, guys, thank you for watching. If you, have, if you like this video, please leave a like. And if you have any comment or question, leave it in the comments section below. Um, if you haven't yet subscribed to the channel, please, I encourage you to do it. I post videos um, 
uh, often, uh, well, depending on, uh, I work, so uh, whenever I can, I post videos, guys. So thank you very much. I, I hope you like these videos. Um, I suggest these two that you are seeing, or these three. So thank you very much, and I'll see you in the next one.